Welcome to Mancinelli's Math Lab. This was a requested question. Let's cover it in this video. I am given a random variable which I've called Z. <clears throat> they represent the auto claim amounts. Z is given to be uniformly distributed over the interval from zero to 10,000. As you know, uniform distribution is a consequence of that since it's one over the length of the interval, 10,000 minus zero. So one over 10,000 is the probability density function there. <clears throat> and then we have actuary A and actuary B. Now actuary A reports his claim amounts or her claim amounts as the auto claim amounts over a thousand and actuary B reports their claim amounts as actuary A's claim amounts, but round to the nearest integer. So kind of weird and confusing. And to make it more confusing, we're after the absolute value of the difference between the fourth moment of X and the fourth moment of Y. So strange business here. Uh, I want to compute the fourth moment of X first. Let's do that then. All right. Um, so first thing uh, I want to do is I probably need to find the density function of X. Okay, so um, let's do that. So probability X is less than or equal to X. This is the CDF, and this is equal to um, the probability uh, that Z is less than or equal to a thousand X, right? This is uh, equal to, I'm actually going to, yeah, so I can say this. So therefore, um, f of x, think about this for a second. This is the CDF uh, of z. This is the CDF of z, but this is actually the CDF of x. Let me just write that. Let's just be clear here. I, I don't want to talk to myself. I mean, what's the point? All right, so this is the CDF of x. How do I get the PDF of x given I have the CDF. Oh, I take the derivative. So I differentiate this. This is CDF of z evaluated at 1000x, right? So this is going to be, I claim, f of z at 1000x times the derivative of 1000x. I'm using the chain rule here. So this is times 1000. Interesting stuff. What does this give me? What is the distribution function, probability density function, I should say, of z? It's this business, 1 over 10,000, evaluated at 1,000x. Well, there's no argument here, so I cannot plug it in, but I can multiply by 1,000, and that gives me the following, x over 10. So that right there um, is... That's not x, just kidding, that's not x, it's just 1 over 10. That's just 1 over 10. So that's, that's the density function of x, 1 tenth. So it's uniform as well. And if you think about it for a second, um, if z is going from 0 to 10,000, then the smallest x can be is 0. And the largest x can be would be if z is 10,000. 10,000 over 1,000 uh, is 10. So 0 to 10. So notice x is uniform. X is a uniform uh, distribution over the interval 0 to 10. So how do I get the fourth moment of X? The fourth moment of X is defined to be the integral. Um, we're going to go from 0 to 10. I want to multiply by, well, the integral is going to be X to the fourth times a tenth. So pretty straightforward, I think. Pretty easy. And this looks like it's going to be... Um, 1 over 50 x to the fifth going from 0 to 10, which is equal to 10 to the fifth over 50, um, which is equal to 10,000 over 50, which is 1,000 over, uh, sorry, this is 10,000, uh, oh, ten, so this is 100,000 over 50. So this is 10,000 over 5, which is 2,000. All right, so let's just record that information. We'll leave it aside. So, so far I have that. Let me put it down here in the bottom corner. I have that the fourth moment of X is equal to 2000. 
So in a way, we've answered half of our question. Now I need to find the fourth moment of why. But to find the fourth moment of why, we're going to do something a little bit different. Okay, salute the dogs for barking. They like to bark when I make videos. I don't know what it is. It gets them excited. They love math. There you go. Plain and simple. I mean, who doesn't love math, right? Yeah, I know. All right. Actuary B. All right, so we took care of actuary A. I want you to think about this uh, for a second. Let's first think about what values of Y can we have? Well, remember, Y is taking on basically X rounded to the nearest integer. X is from zero to 10, which means Y is equal to zero, one, two, uh, three, all the way up to 10. So, um, I wanna do something that I do in a lot of videos actually, and hopefully you're catching on to this. I'm just gonna go through this carefully. And what I mean is, I'm going to just look at each individual value of Y. Here's what I mean. I ultimately want to know the mass function of y. y is a discrete random variable, which means we'll have a probability mass function. To do that, I'm going to sort of go about it directly. So the first thing I'm going to say is, um, when is y zero? So y, y equals zero if what? If zero is less than or equal to x, is less than 0.5. Is that true? Yes, because x, or sorry, y is the rounded, uh, x rounded to the nearest integer. I'm gonna write this as capital Y. This is my random variable y. It's taking on those values, okay? This is true, right? If x is between zero and uh, 0 0.5, less, strictly less than 0 0.5, y is zero. Therefore, therefore, what can I say? So. Hence, this implies that the probability that y equals zero equals the probability that zero is less than or equal to x is less than 0 0.5, which is what? Which is what? You don't really even need to compute an integral here um, because we have the density function of x. We have the density function of x. Let me write it here. Remember, this is uniform. X is a uniform random variable over the interval 0 to 10. Do the integration if you want. Compute this as an integral. Integral 0 to 0 0.5 of 1 tenth. That's just 1 tenth times the length of the interval. So this is 1 tenth times 1 half, which is 1 over 20. So I hope you caught on to what I'm saying there. Um, if you like, let me just write it right here and then I'll erase it. This is the integral 0 to 0 0.5 of 1 tenth, which is 1 over 20. Right? I mean, it's hard to say how much detail I should go into. I don't, one of my, probably the hardest thing for me is to figure out what pieces of information should I go over and what should I omit. So this is what I have. Now I'll keep going down the line. What if y is equal to one? Y is equal to one, well, when is y equal to one? If x is between 0 0.5, I can include 0 0.5, and then I need to not include actually 1.5, right? So this tells me that probability y is equal to one equals probability uh, x is between 0 0.5 and 1.5. Again, Write down the integral if you like. This is a tenth times the length of the interval. This is one tenth. Continue this for y equals two, y equals three, if you like. See the pattern. Uh, nothing interesting happens until you get to y equals 10. y equals 10 if, um, what values of x will give me y equals 10? We're gonna have to have 9.5 less than or equal to x, uh, less than or equal to 10, which tells me which tells me that probability that y equals 10 is equal to 
Um, well, it's the probability that x is between 9.5 uh, and 10, which equals the same thing as before. The length of the interval is a half, just like it was when y was equal to 0. So this is 1 over 20 again. We are good to go. We have the probability mass function. It's not something nice, but these, um, these values, right? These give me the, the values of the PMF. The discrete random variable y has a probability mass function. Those give me those values right there. So what I can say uh, for the fourth moment of y, the fourth moment of y, by definition, is the sum um, from y equals 0 to 10 of y to the fourth times the probability mass of y. Now, again, we don't have a nice representation for this, but just add these things up. We have all the various um, values for probability mass. When I plug in zero, it zeroes out. So I don't even care about the very first one. So that's gone. But then it's going to be 1 tenth uh, for y equals 1. And then it's going to be 1 tenth for y equals 2. All the way up to y equals 9, it's going to be, it's going to have a probability mass value of 1 tenth. And then it only changes when y is 10. So this is going to be 10 to the fourth uh, over 20. The probability mass was given by 1 20th times 10 to the fourth, because I'm computing the fourth moment. Now this turns out actually to be um, 20033.3. So I have the fourth moment of y given here. And I also have the fourth moment of x is to uh, 2,000. <clears throat> so I think you know what the difference is. <clears throat> the absolute value of the difference is 33.3. Do I even need to write it? So there, hence, oh, hence my answer, I mean, do the subtraction. I have faith in you. Our answer is this, 33.3. All right, I hope this was helpful. Tell me what you think.